I'm Dr. David Hill, and today we're going to be talking about how to drain an inner ear infection. I think what we really mean here is how to drain a middle ear infection or an acute otitis media. And let's look at the anatomy of the ear for a second. <clears throat> the external auditory canal is the part you can see. This is the part you should never stick a Q-tip in, and it ends right here at the eardrum. It's a closed system. You can get an infection of the outer ear. That's usually called a swimmer's ear, and that's not what we're concerned with today. The inner ear is here where the nerves are, and that's not an infection that can be drained. You can get what's called a labyrinthitis or inner ear infection, but that's usually viral and usually goes away on its own. The middle ear is the area in between the outer ear and the inner ear. It contains the bones that carry sound signals from the eardrum to the nerves that detect them. This is the area where fluid can collect, especially when there's a cold, allergies, or sinusitis. That fluid, once it's in there, can become infected with bacteria. We call that a middle ear infection or acute otitis media. Now, normally the way to treat this is with antibiotics. Sometimes antihistamines or allergy medicines like Flonase, a steroid that you can blow up into your nose, can help relieve any drainage or clogging in this tube, the eustachian tube that drains fluid out of the ear. However, occasionally ear infections fail to respond to those conservative measures with antibiotics. In those cases, an ear, nose, or throat, an ear, nose, and throat surgeon can look in and assess what needs to be done. Occasionally, they may just put a needle through the eardrum and suck out the fluid for culture. That's called a tympanotomy, and those holes heal up very quickly. For more chronic problems or recurrent problems, they may choose to put a PE, a pressure equalizing or tympanostomy tube, in the eardrum temporarily. Usually those tubes sit there for months or a year or two, and they allow fluid and air to get in and out of the middle ear and cut down the number of ear infections that somebody gets. They don't eliminate ear infections altogether, and it's not clear that these tubes preserve hearing or speech function when they're used, but they certainly can reduce the number of ear infections, and therefore for antibiotic exposure and office visits. So, remember, usually fluid in the middle ear goes away on its own. If it's infected, usually you want to use antibiotics, although I will add that in children over age two, you don't necessarily need to use those. And last, if it's a chronic or severe problem, an ear, nose, or throat surgeon may want to assist the drainage with a tympanotomy or a pressure equalizing tube. Talking about getting fluid out of the middle ear when it's infected, I'm Dr. David Hill.